uh, about the uh, that incident with Pascal Verlaine because it is a bit of an interesting political situation that because they do share the same power train. Um, so there is like a relationship there. You know, there's a it's very collaborative. They 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 learn from each other's findings and learnings at a race weekend. So there is a kind of um, unspoken collaboration between them. Whereas it's, it's not even unspoken. It's very much out there. So to have that moment yesterday and for Jake to say something like, you know, maybe there's a break in trust. Uh, that is very interesting. Very very interesting. Okay, anything in the chat we can get to? People want to speak about We will talk to David. Let's talk to. Let's talk to David Beckman because now yeah, you're you're one race in now. You've had yesterday's yeah. experience, and I thought you did a pretty good showing of yourself. Um, yeah, I think it was a it was a decent race. You know, it was very tough for me first kind of laps and doing energy runnings properly. Um, but yeah, I had some contact in the second lap, which damaged a bit my front wing. So, but balance was not great. But I think overall, the, you know, then here and there some mistakes um, can be a bit more efficient. But I learned from that, and I think. Yeah, today the quality was a bit better and we we're starting a bit better in the, on the grid. So uh, kind of uh, having another chance and let's see what will happen. So yesterday, um, well, it wasn't the first time you've driven a Formula E car. You've done testing, you've done a lot of sim sessions, but yeah. the first time you've raced, what would yeah. you say was the biggest learning or the biggest challenge that you found? Um, the biggest challenge, I think, was the first lap. Everyone is extremely aggressive. Um, I feel like the most drivers don't really care to crash. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, you know, you, you can be so close together because it's it's you have not no no dirty air or anything, so you can stay quite close. And on the other hand, what the most thing what I learned was to be more efficient. I think in the end of the race I was struggling a bit with energy management, so um, that was quite difficult. You know, to, to drive to defend, but to still and overtake and still be efficient. It's not very easy, but uh, yeah, I think uh, I learned quite a bit in that race. Thanks, David. Interesting insight. Always good to get like a rookie insight or you know a new driver because we talk a lot about all of these things, you know, race in, race out. But there's only really one type of experience you can lean on when it comes to physically driving a Formula E car in a race for the first time, and that is people like David. So great to get that. Um, anything else in the chat we can refer to? Okay, there's a lot of love for the Espensky and uh, Stoffel van Dorn, so let's uh, let's go through past this Porsche garage, noisy Porsche garage, playing the uh, the rock music of uh, Limp Biscuit, I think it is, bit of a blast from the past, the early noughties there. Okay, let's um, make our way down to DS Penske. Keep up, Vincent. <laughs> You're looking at the Mahindra racing cars there. Watch these front wings as you come through. Uh, it's Sasha Fenestras, Norman Nato of uh, the Nissan Formula E team. Good, good, uh, pretty good qualifying performance from Sasha today. Um, you know, we've, we've seen it before. We've seen him qualify well, uh, and we saw it again today. In fact, he, he kind of said something to me off camera, which was, um, "It almost feels like a win when you get into the duels like that," because they I think, uh, as being a rookie and a team that has sort of struggled with with pace and efficiency at points in the season, you, you know, you've got to celebrate those wins. So that's exactly what they did. So let's um, some Dan Tickton fans in the chat. Well, I can imagine that's always the case because there's a lot of Dan Tickton fans. He's being spoken to. So let's go to Stuffle and then we'll come back to Dan. So don't leave anybody watching this stream. Stay on the stream and we will come to Stuffle Van Dorn and then head to Dan Tickton. So plenty of time to get your questions in for Dan Tickton um, and then we can go to him. Right. Come in with you, Stoffel Van Dorn. You're on Instagram Live, and there has been a flooding of comments asking to speak to you. Amazing. I love you guys. <laughs> okay, talk to us about a uh, little recap of quality to begin with. Uh, yeah, um, okay, quality. Um, same position as yesterday, actually, P5 on the grid, which is, uh, which is okay. But uh, a little bit of work to do. You know, the Maserati is obviously very, very, very quick. Um, so we gotta, yeah, we got to find a little bit more pace to... Uh, to compete with them but um, yeah let's see how the race will go I mean it's gonna be a longer race today a little bit more challenging on energy um, so let's see how we go is this gonna be a kind of sit back assess situation maybe make the people in front use a bit more energy I'm not exactly sure um, you know yesterday was kind of a pure pace race uh, so less of the playing playing the games let's say I think today uh, there won't be that many games as well, so I think uh, I think it will be a race on pace. 
for sure the energy will be a little bit more of a factor today, but um, I think quickly it will become a, a pace race. I love it. I love it that there's so, so unknowns. It's always so exciting. Let's have just a quick chat with John, John Eric Vern after this selfie. There we go. Right, uh, John Eric Vern. It was so. It was pretty tight in um, in the qualifying groups. Just to very narrowly not make it into the, the duels. Yeah, One thousand to stop her. In a met, uh, incredible. One thousand. Well, I mean, that's an, that's an incredibly small amount of time. Um, what would that be in distance? Are we talking millimetres? <laughs> it must be. It's almost nothing. Love it. Okay, well, okay we'll talk, let's talk about the race then, game plan, because we have seen good performances from even further back from where you're starting. Uh, yeah, starting ninth today, so everything's possible. Um, I just hope we um, were able to improve the car from yesterday because the pace was not that, that, that great. And uh, if we have a good pace, and uh, I think we, we can be quite good on energy as well. So hopefully I can come back in the field and see where I can end up. Are they new sunglasses? Sorry? Are they new sunglasses? Uh, I bought them in Monaco. I didn't see them in Monaco. I really like them. They're very cool. Very cool. Thanks, Jeff. Right, let's uh, let's um, find our way back to Dan Tickton. We promise you Tickton, and we're going to bring, we're going to deliver. We're going to deliver like DHL, deliver our race logistics. Here we go. Now, before we get to him, was there any questions specifically for Dan in the chat? Uh, people, what's your favourite donut? What's the most people love. Just going to come and speak to you, Dan, because people on the Instagram Hello, live chat they love the donut. Did they? They did. They enjoyed it. They're, they're talking about it in the comments. It's one of my poorer efforts, I have to say. Um, but the, the last shot was cool when I came, came through the smoke. The big smoke screen. It was epic. Yeah. Okay, talk to me about where you are. Um, how was qualifying? What's the game plan now for the race? Terrible, I would say, um, was qualifying. But uh, it's weird. We put the second set on and normally you improve. Um, we just had no grip on the second set. Uh, other, other drivers have complained of discrepancies between sets through this year. And that's the first time for me personally. I've seen it have that big of an impact. Um, as soon as I went in through turn one and I tried to lean on the tyre, I just felt no grip and I knew that I was pretty screwed at that point. So uh, we made some good improvements overnight and I think in FP, like if I made a big mistake in 16, had I not, I would have probably been second in, in, in session there. So I think the pace was actually quite good. So unfortunately, just the tyres. What does that leave you to do now in the race? Because we are going to see slightly more traditional style of Formula E racing as of this season, which hasn't always been that uh, helpful to you? Yeah, I think um, with the extra laps, we might see the races going potentially more in the direction of what they have been in previous races this season. So maybe people saving a bit more at the start. Um, so that might throw a bit of a spanner in the works. But I think, you know, look, for us, to be brutally honest, we're, we're still struggling with efficiency. So I think with where I'm starting, uh, I think I'm going to try and be as efficient as I can in the first 10 laps, maybe drop away from the pack and, and hope for some kind of incident because I think that's probably our best chance of getting to points. Unlikely that I'm going to overtake 10 cars, unfortunately. Strange things have happened, mate. <laughs> See you there. Right, let's just let's quickly talk to Sergio as well. No, 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 no. quickly talk to you, Sergio. Um, these are, are these the hardest conditions that you've ever raced in Formula E? Most likely. Uh, I, I would compare that. Another very tough one, believe it or not, was London uh, last year. Uh, the steering effort was just crazy. Uh, and um, I would say this is the second toughest I've ever had. Because it's very hot, but the steering effort here is not that bad. So as a, as a Brazilian, are you, is the heat affecting you as much? Because every time Nelson comes into the commentary booth with me, he goes, Guys, it's freezing in here. <laughs> well, I... I'd say it helps, yeah. If you're just used to spending many years of your life in this warmer conditions, I, I guess you get less annoyed by the heat and about the sweat because you're just more used to it. But there's many years I've been living in Europe, and uh, this is also much more humid than Brazil, than where I come from in Brazil at least. So uh, I also struggle, but I, I guess not as much as uh, Dan, for example, or, <laughs> or other. But he, he spends most of his life on vacation anyway, and he's probably used to it. Yeah, I mean, but, there's definitely a slight difference in the tan, for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a little bit of a difference. But I, I guess, yeah, it's not a disadvantage. Let's put it like that. Okay, right, this. Cheers, Sergio. Cheers, Sergio. Right. There we go. There's the Neo 33 racing car. Uh, very cool livery here. And you kind of see the different parts here that can be added on as and when needed. Uh, the, the team are working on the car back there. Um, so there's a lot of secret stuff going on there. So don't show too much, Vincent. The other team will get annoyed with us. That's right. We've got to be careful. Because, you know, it's all about... The long game, we want to keep bringing you access, keep getting you close to drivers and teams. If we start showing things that they don't want us to, they'll just tell us we can't do it anymore. So um, that's really, it's a balance, it's a balance. So I think we've got a good 
we've, got, we've struck a good balance. What do you think, guys in the chat? Do you think you're getting, you get more access, more exclusives here in Formula E than you do elsewhere? I do. Certainly, I certainly feel really. Let's talk a little bit about the weather because we've had a few drivers now talk about these conditions. I have to, there's too many things I want to bring up, but obviously temperature-wise, we're looking at uh, today slightly less than yesterday, kind of a 32 to 34 degrees. Humidity is right up there at 75%, so everything's just, there's a lot of moisture in the atmosphere, everything, you're kind of instantly sweating. I'm saying that as a guy in, in kind of light trousers and, and a black sports top. These guys are sitting in race suits and, and helmets and stuff, which probably weigh about four kilos and a good couple of mil thick. So, you know, they've got it much worse for sure. And you can see the way they come out of the car, they're, they're really struggling. And I feel today certainly more sluggish with the way the heat sort of battered us all yesterday. So I can't even imagine what these guys will be feeling today, knowing that they've got a race um, in a pretty gruelling race. And what will be even more you know, demanding when it comes to the energy management side of stuff, the, their mental game is going to have to be a lot stronger today because it's not going to be as much of a flat out race as yesterday was. So yeah, a few things to think about. Anything in the chat? So there was a question about any chance of thunderstorms and the freak rain showers you often get um, in Asia and Southeast Asia. Um, and there's always a chance. I mean, that is the kind of the nature of, of the weather here. Like it can be, it can just change. And then when it does rain, it can suddenly just pour. So uh, there's always a chance depending on how the system's moving. But I looked at a couple of radars uh, and satellite maps this morning. And it looked like if there was going to be any today, it was around 4 p.m. at local time, so it's after the race, and it was just a few millimetres. So there might be some light showers later, but I don't think it's going to be during the race unless things change significantly. But good question. Is there anything else we'd like to know from the chat? Some Brazilian fans in the house. Well, hopefully you, uh, you're enjoying that chat with Sergio um, about Brazil. Let's, uh, let's talk with uh, Mr. Formula E. Lucas de Grassi. Um, Lucas, we're going to chat with you. We're on uh, Instagram Live um, with Formula E. And there's guys? a lot of Brazilians in the chat who have requested really? to talk to you. They're awake? It's like in Brazil, it's like... Thank you. Don't underestimate the dedication it's of Formula E fans. I think they're going to sleep there. Brazil is like 10 hours behind. They're dedicated. Yeah, nice. Okay, so talk to me. It's, it's been a challenging weekend for, for you. And I saw your, uh, your post yesterday that even though you made up loads of positions, you still felt like uh, things could have been better. Yeah, I mean, uh, since since Mexico, which kind of everybody was trying to understand the car, which was the first race, I think was the only opportunity we had to score a podium, and we did it. Uh, after everybody understood better the car, we fell behind, and uh, we are trying to improve, but the field is very competitive, so the last few races, we are struggling. Uh, we are trying to make the car better. We are making some improvements, but not enough. So today we qualified 19. Um, again, in the back of the field, it's going to be a hard race. But I honestly, my lap was not that bad. I could have done uh, maybe slightly better, but there is still a lot of pace missing. We need to investigate um, and, and try to make it better. But um, it's uh, for me, it's very hard. Uh, it's very hard to... Uh, uh, to get the car, to understand what's wrong, and and because of the the way it works, you can only homologate the powertrain every two years. Yeah. So even if we know that things that we can do a big step, we cannot change it right now because we have to wait the homologation period. Okay, interesting. Let's talk about the the conditions as well because I was just talking to Sergio about if there was any slight advantage with being from Brazil and having being more used to hotter temperatures. Do you feel that? I, I saw you did some sauna preparation before this. <laughs> Not in Brazil. Uh, yeah, I'm Brazilian, but I'm originally from Italy, uh, and I haven't been living in Brazil for now almost 20 years. So, to no advantage. <laughs> it does not any advantage at all. Um, although, yeah, I do a lot of sauna. I do a lot to prepare for hot races like this that you lose a lot of water. But essentially, you need to be fit. So you need to run. You need to cycle. You need to be motor sport. You need. To, it's not that a type of sport that you can finish the activity tired. You have to finish the activity well, because if you're tired, you can do a mistake in the last corner of the last lap and crash the car and whatever you did the whole race doesn't matter anymore. So you can never do a mistake. So you can never really get tired. So that's why the level of fitness needs to be very high, much higher than the requirement to drive the car.
because then you have mental clarity of all the decisions you do during the race. Super interesting. Thanks for the insight, Lucas. Thank you. See you later on. Right, let's, uh, let's just park up here and uh, answer some final few questions. I'll let you know where you can watch the race and then we'll uh, bring this live stream to a close. Any other questions in the chat or comments? People were asking about Nick Cassidy, who, who uh, for the second day in a row did not make it into the qualifying duels as championship leader. His, his lead at the top massively slashed by Pascal Verlein's win yesterday. So he's got his work cut out for him, but we spoke to him earlier. He seemed pretty chilled. He feels like there's something on the card. I mean, this is a guy that won the race in Monaco from P9 in Monaco. So depending on how this race style ends up being and uh, well, how the kind of format works with the extra laps, there's every chance that good points could be on the cards, but the general consensus, I think, for a lot of drivers here is that even though it feels very much to me that there isn't that much of this season left to do it, we've still got another uh, two double headers and a, a new race after this weekend. So there's like, yeah, there's a lot, five races basically to, to, to do well. Um, so there, and there's a lot of points up for grabs in that time. So I can see why maybe he's not stressed that he has to do it all today. But I think there's every, every possibility to answer the question. Now, I'm just going to remind you where you can watch this race. If you don't know, you can head over to FIAFormulaE.com forward slash watch. And on that site, it will show you and tell you everything you need to know about where you can watch the race in the country that you're on and what uh, TV provider it will be on or where it will be streamed. Anything like that is all going to be on that website. FIAFormulaE.com forward slash watch. Uh, all that leads me to say is... We are, just looking at my timing, right? Just gone 10 past one here, local time. We are just under two hours away, and way more than two hours away, um, an hour and 45 away from this race starting. And we don't know what it's gonna be like. We've got an idea. Stoffel, put, Stoffel Van Dorsen said it perfectly. We really don't know how this race is gonna pan out. All we know is it's not gonna be as easy for those at the front as it was 